Joe Doring has arrived at Impact Wrestling, and the Knockouts Tag Team Title Tournament brackets have been announced. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Before I get started, I just want to mention that I have started my own YouTube channel. It's called the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. The Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Go check it out. Plenty of interviews on there with indie stars and legends and some content, other content as well. Please go check it out. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm at 83 subscribers. I'm trying to get my hit my first goal of 100 subscribers. Please head on over there. Subscribe. Get interviews with Kaizen Pro Wrestling Champion Kobe Christ. We have interviews with Nikita Koloff. Have interviews with Ricky Morton. Interviews with various other indie stars such as uh, Luchador Sensation Guerrero Sierra, uh, Mia Malik. We have interviews with the natural Nick Sullivan up there and many, many others and many, many more to come. So please head on over to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network and please hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get started. Ah, turning point. We saw the return of Joe Doring as he came out with Eric Young and just absolutely destroyed the Deaners. Joe Doring, not too many people are familiar with him. I'm seeing a lot of who, uh, a lot of who posts on on social media. Joe Doring is, and take my word for it, Joe Doring is an absolute star. He is huge in Japan, uh, currently working for All Japan Pro Wrestling. He's a two-time Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion and has held the All Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team titles on four different occasions. He's an, like I said, he's an absolute star. He's huge. The fans in Japan absolutely love him. He's a modern-day Stan Hansen, basically. A modern-day Stan Hansen. And we saw a little bit of that last night with that massive clothesline he hit on Cousin Jake. Just absolutely tremendous, tremendous talent. And it was really, really good to see him in Impact Wrestling. And I, I kind of like that they brought somebody in who's not really well-known in the United States. The reason being is it shows that Impact Wrestling is looking worldwide for talent. And... You're not going to see Joe Doring anywhere except Impact Wrestling. You haven't seen him in any any other promotion in the United States except Impact Wrestling. Like they could have brought in a Matt Cardona or they could have brought somebody else, uh, another WWE uh, release released wrestler. But you would just say, people would just be going, oh, another WWE guy they're bringing in. Uh, but in this case, this is not a WWE guy. This is a guy that no one's seen before. So he's basically fresh talent in the United States. And I think there's, there will be a lot more interest in a fresh face than a WWE cast-off. That, that's my opinion. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. And trust me, putting it with Eric Young, I thought, was, was great as well. You know, Eric Young, Joe Doring getting together to take out... I, I think they're going to start taking out random wrestlers. I don't know if they're going to necessarily feud with the Deaners. We might get a, a match with the Deaners against Eric Young and Joe Doring. Uh, I don't think the Deaners were just were the main target. I think they're coming in to take out as many people as they can in Impact Wrestling. So um, let's keep our eyes on Joe Doring and trust me. Trust me. As a matter of fact, if you want to see a great match with Joe Doring, uh, go on to uh, Daily Motion. I don't think it's on YouTube. Daily Motion, uh, 2018, uh, Triple Crown winner. Uh, I'm sorry, Triple Crown champion Joe Doring defending his title against um, All Japan Pro Wrestling Superstar Kento Miyahara. Um, Joe Doring does lose the title in that match, but it's just a fantastic match, and you'll see in that match just how great Joe Doring is. So check that one out. 2018. On Daily Motion, uh, Joe Doring taking on Kento Miyahara with the um, with the Triple Crown uh, Heavyweight Championship on the line. The Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship is actually the main title uh, in All Japan Pro Wrestling. 
And um, I, I noticed a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but I saw a, a little bit on the internet uh, people, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, websites saying that uh, former TNA star returns. I, I wouldn't call Joe Doring a uh, TNA star. He wasn't even Joe Doring. I think he was in Impact Wrestling for a bit. And he was primarily a jobber, I believe, uh, from what I remember. I can't remember his, his name. I'd have to look it up. But he wasn't Joe Doring. And uh, he wasn't a, he's not a former TNA star. He had a couple of matches, and then he uh, he left and uh, was signed with All Japan. Now, I'm thinking about uh, how long, if, if they signed him to, what kind of contract did they signed him to? Because I know in all, in all Japan Pro Wrestling right now, I don't think he could travel to Japan. So... Um, I think he's he's going to be an impact for for a few months. I believe once he's able to travel again, and don't quote me on this, but I'm I'm, I'm almost certain that he is still under contract with All Japan Pro Wrestling, and he's wrestling like like ninety to a hundred matches a year with All Japan Pro Wrestling, and I do believe that he's still signed with them. So once he's able to go back, I think the main, his main focus is going to be All Japan Pro Wrestling. I could be wrong. Maybe his contract is up. I, 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 I don't know, but I'm just about certain that uh, he's not able to travel to Japan. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I am certain he's, he's not able to travel to Japan because of the pandemic, but I'm almost certain that he's still on a contract with All Japan Pro Wrestling is uh, what I meant to say. So uh, we'll see how that plays. There's no. I was looking for um, contract details online. I couldn't find anything, and I, I wouldn't imagine it's long term, just because of the all Japan pro wrestling thing. And um, all right, so but uh, let's uh, let's keep rising. I actually would love to see Josh Alexander one on one with Joe Doring. That would be a great match. And there's a lot of possibilities for Joe Doring uh, in Impact Wrestling. And again, don't. Don't get discouraged when you're on social media and you see people saying, uh, saying who or who is this guy. I expected it because, like I said, not too many people know who he is in the United States. He was actually, he actually had a match in 2018 um, here in Windsor for Impact Wrestling uh, where he defeated Moose. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers that. He actually defeated Moose in 2018 when he was the uh, Triple Ground Heavyweight Champion. Uh, he came, defended the title. Uh, actually, I don't know if the title was on the line, but he had a match with Moose and he defeated Moose uh, right here in Windsor. Uh, so um, he has um, he has been uh, with Impact Wrestling in the past, and he's back. And let's all keep our eyes on him. I recommend everybody to keep their eyes on Joe Doring. All right, so let's move on. The Knockouts Tag Team Title Tournament brackets have been announced. And let me run down the tournament. Let's get the brackets. Here we are. So we have... Tanil Dashwood and Alicia, Alicia Edwards, are a team. They did that whole thing. With, they were, did that whole thing with Tanil Dashwood looking for a partner, and I thought they were going to go with Tanil Dashwood and Jordan Grace. But as we saw in Turning Point, it didn't quite work out between the two. And I'm actually kind of happy about that because I was really worried that Tanil Dashwood and Jordan Grace were going to win the Knockouts Tag Team Titles, but that's not going to happen. Because Tennille Dashwood has chosen Alicia Edwards, and their first match they're going to get are against Havoc and Nevea, and uh, the uh, the second bracket will be uh, Jordan Grace and a partner to be announced. Most likely going to be Madison Rain. That's um, that's uh, I think if they were going to bring in somebody new, they probably would have announced it, but uh, it's probably going to be Madison Rain, and they'll they're taking on the team of Killer Kelly. And Renee Michelle. Okay, these are two new, uh, two new wrestlers that we haven't seen before in Impact Wrestling. Killer Kelly, Portuguese pro wrestler, uh, worked for the WWE a little bit. Uh, she was in the Mae Young Classic, and uh, she had a few matches in NXT UK. Uh, she was released, and she's teaming with Renee Michelle, who was also um, in the WWE for a bit. Uh, she was in the Mae Young Classic as well. Also wrestled for Shine. Uh, so Killer Kelly, Renee Michelle, a team against Jordan Grace and most likely Madison Rain. Then we have Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles against the Sea Stars. Now Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles are my pick to win the tournament now. Hands down, they they must win the tournament. They must win the tournament. That's my pick right there. Kiara Hogan, Tasha Steeles. And they're taking on C the Sea Stars. The Sea Stars, if you're not familiar with them, 
are Delmi Exo and Ashley Vox. They're two sisters. They're an indie team, very, very talented. Uh, Delmi Exo has appeared on AEW, I believe AEW Dark, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, they do um, compete as the Sea Stars in uh, on the indie scene. And very, very talented team. So I'm um, excited to see the Sea Stars getting a chance uh, in Impact Wrestling, but um, they're not going to get past uh, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. And the final bracket, uh, Deanna Perrazzo, Kimberly taking on Taya and Rosemary. And so those are the brackets. So we have eight teams, and the tournament starts on Tuesday. And um, I'm not sure what matches uh, they're going to have, but I'm going to do. A, I'm going to predict right now. Uh, in the first round, uh, Havoc and Nevea get... Get by, um, well, not get. They destroy Tush, Daniel Dashwood and Alicia Edwards. Daniel Dashwood will probably just walk away from the match, leaving Alicia by herself, and maybe it'll lead to uh, Alicia Edwards, Daniel Dashwood's uh, feud. Uh, Killer Kelly, Renee Michelle against Jordan Grace, and most likely Madison Rain. Jordan Grace and Madison Rain are um, going to go over there. They're going to they'll they'll win that uh, that match. And Kara Hogan, C Stars. Uh, Kara Hogan and um, I'm sorry, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles against the Sea Stars. No way, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles are going to lose to the Sea Stars. Now, now I I don't th- I, I the, the new the new wrestlers, Kelly Kelly, Renee Michelle, and the Sea Stars. They're not getting out of the first round. And I'm going to talk about them for a second. Uh, I'm going to talk about them in a bit. I, I should say. And then uh, Diona Prazo, Kimberly against Taya and Rosemary. Taya and Rosemary uh, should win that match against Prazo and Kimberly. Okay. All right, so we have the new teams, Killer Kelly, Renee Michelle, and the Sea Stars, that are that are in this tournament. And the tour- the the brackets were announced at Turning Point three days before the tournament, which, by the way, I think was a mistake. They they should have been um they should have been plugging this this these brackets for weeks. We, we look at Killer Kelly, Renee Michelle, and and the Sea Stars. How many people out there are really familiar with them? Okay, I, I wasn't when I saw Killer Kelly. I initially thought it was going to be Kelly Klein. I'm not really familiar with Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle. I am because I watch indie wrestling. I am familiar with the Sea Stars, uh, but I wasn't really familiar with Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle. And there are probably people out there who don't know who the Sea Stars the the Sea Stars are. Impact Wrestling should have put together some video packages uh, for Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle and Delmi Exo and Ashley Vox. And, and show them and introduce them to the Impact Wrestling audience. Instead, people are like, who are the Sea Stars? Right? They're, they're not really promoting, they, they didn't promote the Sea Stars at all. They didn't promote, they're not promoting Killer Kelly, Renee Michelle. There's, there's new talent coming into Impact Wrestling, and, and there's really no promotion. Where's, where's the marketing behind this? Where's, where's the, the going to get the promotion wheels going? Right? Because, oh, because the, there's no way they're going to get out of the first round now because nobody knows who they are. I mean, are the C star? Do, do we really think the C stars are going to beat Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles? Uh, do we really believe that Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle are going to beat Jordan Grace and and most likely Madison Rain? No, you know it's just going to be one and done for these guys, for these um for these wrestlers. And people are, I I saw a post today on Facebook. Somebody uh was um actually somebody commented on um on on a YouTube video that I did that they're really excited that Impact Wrestling have signed the Sea Stars and Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle and Joe Doring, you know, but they haven't signed them. They, they, I, I don't believe that they signed the Sea Stars. I don't believe that they signed Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle. There was, there's no official announcement. And Joe Doring is the only one that might have been signed to, a, it could be a, a short-term contract, you know, based on his All Japan Pro Wrestling um, contract, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but they should have. They should have. They should have did some promoting behind this, and they're not really treating it like it's an, an an important event. And this is a very important event, in my opinion. The Knockouts Tag Team Title Tournament, very very important. You know, but they're not treating it like it is. Hell, you know, this like we should have gotten video packages. I'm sorry. I'm 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 going back to what I was just saying earlier. We should have gotten video packages on the Sea Star. We should have Sea Stars. We should have gotten video packages on Killer Kelly. We should have gotten video packages on Renee Michelle. We should have gotten that, you know, introduced this new talent that's coming in. But we didn't. But we didn't. And that's why there's no way, as I said earlier, no way that they are getting out of the first round. And 
and I'm going to say one more time, Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles are the team that should win this tournament. I'm thinking it's probably going to be Taya, Taya Valkyrie and, and Rosemary are going to win the tournament, but Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles, that's my choice, and that's the team that, that should win this tournament. All right, let's move on. So, two more things. A little bit of a little bit of advice to Impact Wrestling. Do not do any updates a day before a huge event, because I don't know if people have been watching on social media. If you've been following on social media, there's been major glitches with the Impact uh, Plus app. They're updating it. People weren't able to log on. Their passwords weren't working. They weren't getting the uh, support that they needed. They weren't able to get on. People were panicking. Huge turning point event coming up, and people weren't able to to watch it. Uh, I know a few people that weren't able to get on uh, to even watch the um, uh, turning point uh, because their passwords weren't working. Very, very, very bad timing. Word of advice again. Do not impact wrestling. Do not do any updating to the app or to the site when there's a huge event coming up because you had two of two title changes good brothers win the tag team titles over the north congratulations to the good brothers and sue young loses the title to diana perrazzo okay i don't, I don't know why diana perrazzo lost the title in the first place they should have should have had her lose the title in the first place to sue young but uh, Deanna Perrazzo gets the title back. Two title changes. And they then and they announced the teams for the Knockouts uh, Tag Team Title Tournament. But a lot of people weren't able to get on. A lot of people weren't able to get on to see it. I think Impact Wrestling had... Um, I think Impact Wrestling might have been showing a feed. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they were. But I think they might have been showing a feed. But I don't know if that was... Um, if that was well communicated... I don't know if people knew that, but uh, but nonetheless, that that shouldn't be that shouldn't be the the issue there. The issue is that that Impact Plus should have been up and operational so people could watch Turning Point and see these title changes. Because I don't know how many people missed the title changes. I don't know how many people missed the the bracket announcements because they weren't able to get onto Impact Plus. They got to do a little better than that. They got to do a little better than that, and. Last but not least, I'm going to close the show with this. Deanna Peraza wins the Impact Wrestling Women's, uh, I'm sorry, Impact Wrestling Knockouts Championship. They post up on Facebook that she wins. And of course, we get some clown that comes on and says, This company is still around? I thought they died years ago. No, Impact Wrestling didn't die years ago. You know what died years ago? You know what died years ago? Your ability to get through the day without trying to bring some attention to yourself. That's what died years ago. That's what died years ago. And on that note, I'm going to say Impact Wrestling is not going anywhere. And that's it for this week. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. This has been Shooting Up North right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.